Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. In the last episode, I was on the hunt for some garnets, and after doing a little bit of research, I discovered that no, the dwarves don't sell garnets. In fact, no one sells garnets. You've got to loot them off corpses, which means I may be a tad screwed for this quest. Now, you can also pickpocket them off NPCs, and Liliana does have master stealing, so we may end up using her talents in Denerim, but otherwise I'll just have to hope I get lucky. Now then, I did say I wanted to do another very quick round of party camp conversations, just to see if anyone has anything new to say. I'm pretty sure that Zevran will. But of course, starting with Poppy. He wags his tail happily, pet Thorin. He rolls around happily on his back. Thorin deserves pets. He's the beloved Mabari. He deserves all of the pets. And Zevran? I did not thank you. It occurs to me now that you have freed me from the crows, and yet I did not think to thank you for it. No matter why you did it, it still it was done. And I, the benefactor. So, thank you. You're welcome. We are friends, Zevran. I was glad to do it. It's about damn time. There's no need. Hmm. <laughs> Not number three. Hmm. I'm torn between one and two. Because... I've never actually thought about this. Does Artin consider Zevran a friend? Hmm. He's been with us quite a while. He's been useful. And... I think Artin has admitted in the past that, you know, he's very skilled at what he does. And I mean, she chose the persuade option to keep him with the group. I think she acknowledges that he's a bit of a fair weather friend. Like his oath that, you know, oh, I'll be with you no matter what, really didn't actually mean anything. It was only until Zevran decided, nah, I don't want to be with you anymore. So he is a bit of a fair weather friend, but... At the end of the day, I think she's certainly closer to Zevran than she is Ogryn. Jesus. Um... She did st stick her neck out for him. I, th I think, yeah, she's she's been with Zevran long enough that I think she considers him a friend. We're friends, Zevran. I was glad to do it. You say that so quickly, and yet it is an odd thing for me to hear. In the Crows, we do not have friends and yet here you are and i cannot help but consider you such i consider you a friend as well we're not really friends zavran i did what i had to that's it i think of you as more than a friend i consider you a friend as well then allow me to say this what we are doing here stopping the blight i cannot think of anything i have ever done which is so worthy i intend to see this through to the end with you after all Someone must take responsibility for preventing your untimely death. A suitable task for a friend, yes. I think that's an excellent plan. You don't have to die either, you know. You never know what's going to happen. I don't need any help. I think that's an excellent plan. Now, isn't that odd? Just a year ago, Taliesin was telling me, Zevran, why are your plans always so horrid? Planning has never been my strong suit. Now, killing... Killing and lovemaking. Uh, killing and lovemaking and witty retorts. Uh, those I am better at. I forget where I was going with this. Well, no matter. Okay, Zevran. Ah, his codex updated. Zevran Aranai. The crows send their regards. I intend to see this through to the end with you. After all, someone must take responsibility for preventing your untimely death. Between the... In e da -da -da -da, excuse me. But... Oh my god, why? Brain. Are, are you okay, Brain? I, there we go. You're, you're fine. Okay. 
Between the Tavinta Imperium, Ravain and the Free Marches sits the nation of Antiva. Although it possesses few resources of its own, Antiva's location makes it a centre for trade in the north, and the capital, Antiva City, is the wealthiest in the world. Antiva has virtually no army, the monarchy is too weak to support one. Most Antivans would be hard pressed even to name the current king, as the true power lies in the hands of a dozen merchant princes, each with a personal army and each locked in a constant struggle for editor. Oh my dear! And each locked in a constant struggle for power against all the others. Anyone would think then that Antiva would be a ripe target for invasion by one of her neighbours. But even the Kunari leave Antiva alone for one very good reason: the House of Crows, the most efficient most feared and most expensive guild of assassins in the world calls Antiva their home, and their reputation alone defends the borders. Zevron was the crow contracted by Loghain to assassinate Alistair and Artin. One failed attempt later, however, he found himself at the mercy of his would-be victims. They showed him unexpected mercy, and in return he swore to aid the Wardens on their quest to end the Blight. Zevran shows an affinity for the finer things in life, hardly a surprise for an Antivan crow, but his appreciation can be more poetic than he lets on. A simple bar of refined silver or gold, uncomplicated by a craftsman's hammer, is elegantly valuable. Lovely, okay. Your wish? Care to answer some questions? I want to discuss something personal. Do you stare at everyone like that? Never mind. Care to answer some questions? Whatever you'd like to ask. Care to tell me about that last mission now? Yes, I suppose it is time. You have been a good friend to me after all. There is no reason to be silent. There is a reason I accepted this mission in Ferelden, far away from home, and it had nothing to do with any thought that I might leave the crows. Meeting you, after all, was quite an accident. My last mission before this one did not end well. Is this a story or a confession? What happened? It failed or something else? What happened? You must realize that until that day I was cocky and arrogant. I was the best crow in Antiva, I believed, and I bragged of my conquests often, both as an assassin and lover. You were more cocky and arrogant? And how have you changed, and then what? Hmm... This... This does seem to be a bit of a sore spot. This is clearly something that he feels very deeply about, and I don't necessarily think Artin would joke here. You know, he's getting something off his chest. Let's not be a dick to him. And then what? One of the Crow Masters grew tired of my boasting. My bid for an incredibly difficult mark was accepted, much to my surprise. A wealthy merchant with many guards and completely silent. Talison agreed to be part of my team, as well as an elven lass named Rina. She was a marvel. Tough, smooth, wicked. Eyes that gleamed like justice. Everything I thought I desired. Uh-oh. I sense a tragic ending and you fell in love. Hmm. Not, not number one. That, uh oh. Like no, that that seems a bit silly. Um. <laughs> Everything I thought I desired. Yeah, Zevran seems like a love him and leave him kind of guy. Everything he's told Artin has led her to believe this. But how he's talking about Rena. And you fell in love. Rena was special. I had closed off my heart. I thought. But she touched something within me. It frightened me. When Talison revealed to me that Rina had accepted a bribe from the merchant, told him of our plan, I readily agreed that she needed to pay the price and allowed Talison to kill her. Rina begged me not to. On her knees, with tears in her eyes, she told me that she loved me and had not betrayed us. I laughed in her face and said that even if it were true, I didn't care. That was utterly cruel, and that wasn't true, and you killed her? And you killed her? 
Taliesin cut her throat, and I watched her bleed as she stared up at me. I spat on her for betraying the crows. When Taliesin and I finally assassinated the merchant, we found the true source of his information. Rina had not betrayed us, after all. I'm so sorry. You've said it yourself. Death happens. You had no way of knowing that. Hmm. Again, he's clearly very upset about this. We don't want to be a dick to him, so not number two. You had no way of knowing that. Of course not. I didn't care to know. I wanted to tell the crows what we had done, our mistake. Taliesin convinced me not to. He said it would be a foolish waste. So we reported that Rina had died in the attempt. We needn't have bothered. The crows knew what we had done. The master who disliked me told me so to my face. He said the crows knew, and they didn't care. And one day, my turn would come. One day it will. Why would he do that? Because he was a dick. You f uh, so you felt guilty? I don't know what to say. Not one or two. As I said, it's obvious why he did it. Because he didn't like Zevran. Zevran was cocky and he was like, I'm going to take you down a peg. And one is just demoralizing. Hmm. I don't know what to say. You once asked why I wanted to leave the crows. In truth, what I wanted was to die. What better way than to throw myself at one of the fabled Grey Wardens? And then, this happened. And here I am. That is awful, Zevran. I'm so sorry. Do you still want to die? Why did you tell me this? I think number two is a very important question. I do think that Artin likes Zevran. I don't think she'd want him needlessly throwing his life away. Do you still want to die? No. What I want is to begin again. Whatever it is I sought by leaving Antiva, I think I have found it. I owe you a great deal. You owe me nothing. You bet your ass you do. I'm glad to have you with me. I think I'm getting nauseous. You owe me nothing. Let us return to your mission, shall we? Suddenly, I do not feel like standing about. I will say that in um, the World of Thedas books, they give not exactly a different account of that mission with Rena, but it's it's that mission from a different perspective. Basically, in Worlds of Thedas, it's revealed that the target wasn't the wealthy merchant. The target was Rena. The crows were tasked to kill Rena. Basically, she was a... Um, I think she was an illegitimate child of either one of the merchant princes or the actual sitting king. And basically, through, through politics... Someone was wrangling to have her put on the throne. And one of the other people who was, you know, in line to inherit thought, Oh, hell no, I'm not, I'm not losing out to an elven woman. So they, basically they contracted the crows to kill Rena, but to make it look like Rena wasn't the intended victim. And that's why Talizan said... Oh, well, she she betrayed us, so we have to kill her. Also, it's revealed that Zevran, Rena, and Talizan were basically in this little thruple. They were all seeing each other, hence why Talizan saying, Oh, don't do it, Zevran. Don't tell the crows. This would be a waste. That's why Zevran was like, All right, love. Yeah, I'll, I'll do what you say. Because the three of them were in love, and I just... I just find it a very sad mission, really. Your wish? Care to answer some questions? Whatever you'd like to ask. Let's just move on. Your wish? I want to discuss something personal. Again? I'm game. Never mind. And yeah, if if Zevron is staring at, you know, any kind of way at Artin, Artin is just going to ignore it. Things are coming to a head fairly quickly, aren't they? Are you ready? Of course. 
I hope so. We need to overthrow Loghain. I don't know. There's still so much to do. What is it with you and these loaded questions? Ooh. Not number four. I'm disinclined to go with number three. Hmm. Artin needs... She needs to show strength. And... Yes, this, this is one of her inner circle. This is someone that she can show weakness to and all of that. But I think... As she said, things are coming to a head. You know, it's rapidly getting towards the end game. And I don't necessarily mean that in terms of like, we've, we're 80 hours into gameplay. I mean that, you know, the Landsmeet is coming up and the Archdemon is dicking about and the Blight, not the Blight, the, the Horde of Darkspawn is huge. Like, things are ramping up. It's gonna, it's gonna happen soon. And we don't want to demoralize our people by saying, oh, I'm not sure if we're ready. I don't know. So I, I think Artin's going to go with, of course. Her, her father would have told her, you need to put on a brave front. You need to be strong because other people are going to take their strength from you. Of course. The last Grey Wardens in Ferelden. So much is expected from you. It hardly seems fair, either to you or to Alistair. I look at you sometimes, and you are so young. You face death every day. You know you are unlikely to live long. Does it frighten you? Constantly. I fear only an ignominious death. I would gladly give my life for others. Oh, if I'm being brutally honest, I do not remember this conversation. I do not remember ever having this conversation before. Oh. Ignominous. That is not a word I am familiar with. I'm going to assume it means um, dying in obscurity, but I'm going to, I'm going to Google that just in case. I don't, I don't want to pick that and then it actually turns out it meant something else and wins like, oh, you, how could you say that? Let's see, how are we spelling this? Ig... Nom. Ignominy is public shame or disgrace. Deserving or causing public disgrace or shame. Ooh. So I fear only a shameful death. Mmm. Mm -mm. Oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. I don't know. Um, I look at you sometimes and you are so young. Artin's, Artin is only 23. She's younger than me. You face death every day. You know you are unlikely to live long. Does it frighten you? I think it does. So I... I don't think I'm going to go for number three. I would gladly give my life for others. I don't think Artin is that selfless. If it was, I would gladly give my life for the dwarves, then maybe, but... <laughs> but as it as it is, I'm disinclined to go with number three. I think... I think it's the fact that she has lived her entire life surrounded by death the nobles are constantly losing their children she will have lost countless family members friends you know uh, you know the you know like oh lord dace how how is your son he died last week oh i'm so sorry about that you know she has faced death all the time and i think that I, I'm actually thinking of Hamilton, the musical. I imagine death so much it feels more like a memory. When's it gonna get me? In my sleep, seven feet ahead of me. I should not rap. I should steer clear of that. Um, but yeah, I think... I don't think Artin is afraid of death. I think that... I think, I think that's what scares her. 
the fact that she isn't afraid of it, the fact that she's been surrounded by it for so long that death feels like an old friend. That, and that's what scares her. You know, I think, you know, the idea that that's not normal. That isn't how people should live. People should fear this. And I don't. And that isn't right. And yet, out of all of them, I think that her dying in a way that brings shame to her house, to her family, that, she would be scared of that, I think. I fear only an ignominious death. No, a quiet death is not for you. Your passing will be glorious. You will blaze like a falling star, lighting up the night sky. Exactly. You're mocking me. Well, not entirely like that. Oh, I like that. Again, I do not remember this conversation. Um. Mmm. I don't think she's... I don't think Artin would take that in a mocking way. Hmm. <laughs> Again, I'm... I'm trying to think, does Artin fear fading into obscurity? Given how offended she was that her name had been stripped from the memories, admittedly, that has been returned to her now. So no matter what, if she dies as a Grey Warden, her name will live on in the memories. She will be remembered. But, oh. It's between one and three. I think she would like to go gloriously. I think the idea of having a glorious death would please her father. Especially after, you know, Trian gets murdered, Balin will probably either be assassinated or will die at a ripe old age being like, haha, screw you all, I lived. So I think his one daughter going out in a blaze of glory. I think that would make her father so proud. So I think that is how Artin is like, if that's how I've got to go, that's that's how it's going to be. Exactly. The first blight in 400 years, and here you are, the fulcrum on which it all turns. Whatever happens, you will become legend. And if we should prevail, even if you die... You will live on in the memories of those you sacrificed everything for. That's all I could ask for. They will not remember, as it should be. Hmm. I don't think Artin is so cynical to say they will not remember. The dwarves, at the very least, will remember. Hmm. And I think the people of Redcliffe, too, just given the fact that no one died in Redcliffe, we managed to save all of those men. So I think she'd be remembered in Redcliffe, too. So I don't I don't think she'd be so cynical to say that she wouldn't be remembered. You know what? Artin has spent the entire time saying, oh, I, I hate the humans because they won't, they don't know what the dwarves do. Every time a blight ends, they conveniently forget that the dwarves hold the line. So I think she'd be like, yeah, I should be remembered. As it should be. And perhaps one day they will forget, but it will not erase what you did. Every new day that they see will be because of you. And nothing in this world will ever make that untrue. I'll do what I have to because it's my my duty. The hell was that? If someone has broken into my house, I'm going to be very, very upset. I'm just going to ignore that for the time being. Uh, where was I? I will do what I have to because it is my duty. I was hoping for gold and jewels for my service. This is going to go to my head, you know. It is her duty as a Grey Warden, 
as a dwarf. And I, I think that is why she is out of, out of all of these options. That's why she's doing this. And because she wants to protect Orzammar. But, you know, as, as a Grey Warden, she will take her duty seriously and do what is demanded of her, as her father would hope she would do. I will do what I have to, because it is my duty. A Grey Warden through and through, selfless to the last, devoted to those you protect. I am honored to have served with you. I, I don't know about that line, selfless to the last. She's mainly doing it for the dwarves, but whatever, it's cool, it's cool. You, you think that way if you want, Wynn. What's on your mind? I'd like to ask you something about the circle. I will answer to the best of my ability. And nothing right now. Yeah, and that's it. I, I do not remember having that conversation with Wynn before. Wow, okay. That was cool. Hello, schmooples. I know that look. You have something on your mind, don't you? We need to talk. Of course. Tell me a tale, Liliana. All right. It is my job to spin yarns after all. Okay, let's see. Tell me about the Darkspawn. Tell me about Aveline again. Tell me about Flemeth. There was another story I wanted to hear. So we've, we've heard all of them. There was another story I wanted to hear. Which one? Sh okay, nope. I've heard all of them. Oh my god. I thought of it just now, but it slipped my mind. It will come to you soon, I'm sure. Oh, and never mind. Okay, with all done for Liliana, Ogren. Right here, old pal. I'd like to know more about you. What about? On second thought, maybe some other time. All right. We'll talk more later. Aye, all right then. You, you have a lot of nerve coming here. I'll come back later. This is my camp, Ogren. Is there some kind of problem? By the alcohol smell, I'm guessing you're drunk. Yeah, she she can smell the booze. It's not wise to get into a debate with a drunkard. I'm not saying I'm going to go for number one. I'm saying I'm going to go for number four. She's just like, oh, he's drunk. By that alcohol smell, I'm guessing you're drunk. You're drunk. <laughs> Take that, you sodding, uh, sodding poetess. I'll come back later. Poetess? Ah, you think I'm Hesbeth. Ah, I see. You think I'm someone else. Cute. By the alcohol smell, I'm guessing you're drunk. We could just ignore him and keep saying you're drunk. You're drunk, Ogren. Go to sleep. You're drunk, Ogren. Ah, you think I'm Hesbeth. Your disguise can't fool me, woman. That's right. You keep looking at me like that. I'll just go get my pants from that sodding dog. Okay. Sten? Sten, buddy? What is your wish, Kadan? I have a question. I am hardly surprised. Actually, never mind. Very well. Let's go. As you wish. Was there an option to discuss something you'd mentioned? What is your wish, Kadan? No, that wasn't. Let's go. As you wish. A uh, shale... I just want to check with everyone. I am listening. I have some questions. It doesn't have better things to do. Let's move on. On then. Morrigan. What comes, my friend? I'd like to ask you something. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Never mind. What comes, my friend? I'd like to discuss something personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Never mind. And last by last but not least, Alistair Buddy. Something you need, my dear. I have some questions. Of course. Never mind. Something you need, my dear. I'd like to discuss something private. Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? 
Let's go to sleep. Kiss him. I think we need to end this now. Never mind. Never mind. Fair enough. Off we go then. Okie doke, that is everyone. We had a very interesting conversation with Wynn. I was not expecting that. Now then, I am just about out of time for this episode. In the next, we'll be returning to Denerim, and I'm pretty sure we're going to go check out the alienage. Very exciting. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.